All right, I'm going to demonstrate how to use a couple of features unique to Affinity Photo to achieve the Orton effect. It's a technique that was developed by Michael Orton in the mid-1980s, and it produces a soft, dreamy glow effect that can look really nice, especially with landscape and portrait imagery. Now, there are a number of ways to reproduce the effect digitally, but we're going to focus on what I feel is the most efficient use of Photo's features. Many examples involve duplicating, the base image layer twice, using a screen blend mode for the first duplicate, then applying Gaussian blur to the second duplicate and setting that blend mode to multiply. We're not going to do any duplicating, but we will be following the combination of those two blend modes. So with the waffling out of the way, we can go to layer, new adjustment layer, and choose a brightness and contrast adjustment. Now without touching either of these sliders here, we can go ahead and set the blend mode here to screen. And then we can close the dialog. Next, we'll go to Layer, New Live Filter Layer, and Gaussian Blur Filter. Now, by default, Live Filter Layers nest into whichever layer you have currently selected. It does this for performance reasons, but in our case, it needs to stand on its own in the layer stack. So we can just simply click drag it out and put it here. Now, on the Live Gaussian Blur dialog, I'll bump the radius up to about 30 pixels, and also I'll check Preserve Alpha to prevent the borders here from smoothing out to an alpha background. Next, we can set the blend mode to multiply. OK, so in its present state, you'll notice this produces quite a strong tonal difference. The image becomes much darker and has more contrast. Because we're working non-destructively, though, we have several approaches we can take to reduce this tonal difference. Firstly, let's try blend ranges. With the Gaussian blur layer selected, we can click the little cog icon here to open up the blend options. And here we have source layer ranges and underlying composition ranges. What I can do on both of these is drag the leftmost node down all the way. This produces a linear graph that gradually blends the effect in as we reach the midtones and highlights, and also stops it from affecting the shadow detail so dramatically. Now, if I just move this out of the way, and then toggle the Gaussian blur layer off, and then on, you can see the before and after. Perhaps we've neutralized the effect a little too much. In this case, we can uncheck linear here and here, and click drag to add some additional nodes to these graphs, and just blend the effect a bit more into the tonal ranges. Something else we can do, if I just close this, is double-click the brightness and contrast adjustment. Now, initially, we just used this to avoid duplicating the image layer, which would be inefficient, but we can also use it to control the strength of the effect using its sliders. So, for example, I could bring brightness down, and increase contrast. Finally then, we can group these two layers to control their overall strength. And to do this, I just shift click to select both of them, then go to Arrange and Group. So as they're now grouped, we have a convenient way of controlling the opacity for both of them here, and thereby the overall strength of the effect, as you can see as I'm scrubbing the opacity slider. And there we go, a way to achieve the Orton effect non-destructively in Affinity Photo. It's worth noting that you can achieve all sorts of similar effects just by experimenting with blending options. For example, you can produce a really nice diffuse glow effect. And to do this, I'll just delete the group, and I'll add, just on its own, a live Gaussian blur filter. OK. We can drag the radius up to quite a large value, and check Preserve Alpha. Then on the Blend Mode options here, I can set my Blend Mode to Overlay. And then finally, just selecting this layer here, I can access the Blend Ranges and just blend this Gaussian Blur layer out of the Shadow Tonal range. The effect is more subtle, so it's worth giving this technique a try if you feel that the Orton effect is a little too strong for your tastes. 
Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials.